I'd also like to thank Aunt Denise for that extremely good overview of the international statistical system from a user perspective. Um, and one of the challenges, I think, for international organisations is to take that user perspective on the data that they manage and collect. Um, and hopefully a bit of that will come through in my brief uh, presentation and demonstration uh, today. And I'll be touching on um, a couple of areas that the IMF is involved in. Uh, one, on some of the new areas where we're collecting data from countries. And secondly, on some new tools that we have for disseminating this data to, uh, to you as users. So starting off with some of the new uh, areas where we're collecting data, and um, some of these have arisen or been pushed forward by the financial crisis and uh, acknowledgement by <coughs> agencies involved, international agencies involved in the uh, analysis of macroeconomic data and uh, policy setting that there are some real gaps in data collection, which may not have pre present, prevented the crisis, but may well have helped in some of the solutions to uh, addressing the crisis. One of these new data sources, which uh, will be publishing an initial set of data uh, uh, in mid-December, is the Coordinated Direct Investment Survey. And the CDIS is really about improving the quality and the broadening the range of direct investment position statistics. So this is uh, data about countries and their direct investments in other countries. So to get a sense for any individual country, the range of countries and the volumes of uh, investment they have in them. And as you can see, the specific objectives is to have a comprehensive and harmonised set of data that can be compared across countries uh, and uh, having a breakdown of the geographical uh, investment uh, from the intervention of education and to separate out equity investments from debt investments. Uh, the data collected, there won't be a time series initially, we started off with N2009 data, and as I said, that's planned for release uh, in mid-December. Uh, another set of data which is closely related to the direct investment is the Coordinated Portfolio Investment Survey. So this is where countries have, uh, entities within countries have uh, invested in debt and equity securities, so on the stock markets and on the debt markets uh, in other countries, and providing a breakdown of their investment in other countries. Uh, and it's an annual set of data, there's a time series for many countries back to 2001, um, and the 2009 data was actually released uh, earlier this month, uh, and the aim is to have it released before the end of the year following the period which is measured. So the 2009 data will be available by the end of 2010. As you can see, there are currently 77 countries reporting data. Not all countries report all of the uh, indicators. It's not a mandatory data set, even for countries that are uh, enrolled in what's called a special data dissemination standard, which is a voluntary thing for countries to sign up to, but often gives, uh, gives access to capital markets for those countries that do sign up. And when they sign up, they have certain responsibilities to provide data. So for a lot of the data that's in the international financial statistics uh, publication is required for those countries in that standard. The CPIS currently isn't within that, but a large number of countries have seen the, uh, the worth of, of providing data and are starting to do so. And that's the growing data set. Are these two uh, databases, is the data called country, country pairs? Yes. The that's right, that's the... the my aim is to get that, that data for the And as I said, it's um, not all countries that are reporting are even reporting the full set of data, but it's going to grow over time as, as uh, um, The third area that I'd just like to briefly highlight, highlight is financial soundness indicators. I think my colleague, Nicholas Lopush, who presented last year, introduced the FSIs. Um, and this is something that's really taken, uh, taken on some momentum following the financial crisis, and to really have some indicators that are comparable across countries that give a really good sense of, uh, particularly for the banking and, and depository corporation sectors, uh, the exposure, the, the position that countries have uh, in terms of assets to their, to their uh, liabilities and so on. So it's really covering a lot of those different sectors. Uh, there are seven of these indicators which are becoming mandatory for those special data dissemination standard countries uh, within the next year. So this data set is likely to grow very quickly uh, and we're encouraging countries to, to provide as many of these uh, series as, as is possible. 
Uh, from 2011, uh, early in the new year, we will be having an improved presentation and a broader range of these uh, indicators available uh, on our website. All these three data sets are freely available uh, when we publish them via the imf.org uh, IMF website uh, and will also be included in the new tool which I'll show you in the next session. So, there's two new tools that I'd like to highlight. The first is the Principal Global Indicators website. Uh, this presents data for the G20 countries uh, and it's really an initiative of the Interagency Group on uh, Economic and Financial Statistics. This is a group that was convened uh, after the um, financial crisis hit and really in response to a lot of the G20 uh, meetings and identification that there were data gaps arising or noticed during the financial crisis uh, that had we had more data would have uh, given more tools for policymakers to understand the, the nature of the crisis and the solutions that took in place. Uh, so the seven organisations are listed there and they've been meeting on a regular basis to coordinate uh, collection of information. The Principal Global Indicators website is an initial uh, attempt to gather what data international organisations do collect and make them as comparable as possible at least across the G20 countries. We had a lot of instances where organisations were uh, collecting similar data but not on the same uh, methodologies, so comp keep comparing one organisation's data set with another was very difficult. So this is an initial uh, attempt to do that and to present it on one easily accessible website uh, with the ability to look across those countries. The long term aim will be to gradually build the range of indicators available and also the range of countries available. And this is what the homepage of the website looks like. I won't go into the detail. Uh, it's available now online at principalglobalindicators.org. Uh, the main part of my presentation will be a live demonstration, fingers crossed, it will work uh, properly, uh, of a new facility that will be available in the new IMF e-library early in the new year, which will provide access to both the uh, statistics products that the IMF currently uh, provides, which I believe are available through SES uh, system. So that's the international financial statistics, balance of payments, uh, direction of trade, and government finance statistics. But also some of the free data sets, such as CBIS, CDIS, and FSI that I talked about earlier. Um, this uh, e-library won't replace existing third-party mechanisms, so the beyond 2020 facility, I think, is available now. Free SES will continue. Uh, but it will replace the current site for those that have access to the IMSstatistics.org and also will provide the point of access for the free data uh, that I mentioned. Uh, within the data section of the e-library there are two main ways of accessing uh, information which I'll show you. The first is data reports. These are predefined reports that hopefully will answer many uh, initial questions that data users have and uh, provide a fast way to access the data and to export it out to a uh, system or uh, to print it out um, for use. And also a query book facility. This is a way to really get down to the specific data point, data series, or range of series that you're looking for, uh, and then be able to export it into your systems. So, this is where I cross my fingers. This is uh, currently in the development environment, I'm remoting into the development environment in the IMF, so uh, it has some working branding on it. This is what final uh, will look like, but it'll be very similar to this, and the functionality will be the same. Um, so apologies in advance if there are any hiccups <coughs> with the presentation. Uh, so this is the home page, there are three main sections. The left hand column is all of the place to access data from. The central column is personalization. You can log in using a username and password or email and password and save your queries and be able to access them again later. And the right hand side has information about uh, latest news and, and fe data that's featuring a few data that's available from the site. Uh, so I'm going to start off with a quick, quick find section. This is a way to get to data reports. So these are predefined uh, views of the data that give you some control to select uh, between different countries and so on. And you can choose a data source or a country or a topic and go into, uh, into a data report. So I'm going into the International Financial Statistics uh, section. And there'll be a list of data reports. As I said, this is a development environment. We're still adding the content in. Uh, but you'll have a list of data reports. 
and also just some initial content there to give you a sense of what's in the data reports you might find in this section. So I'll click on the IFS Economic Indicators. And this will open that data report which provides some high level information uh, from the IFS publication. And you'll see there, I have a set it up for the United Kingdom, as we're here. Uh, has just some probably hard to read from the seats there, but it has some information, <coughs> market rates, uh, exchange rates, some fund position, interest rates, and so on. There's a control here that's a user control, so you can click on the uh, down arrow there and choose a country from the list. And I'll choose Australia, it's probably warmer there today. And what you get is the same report uh, with the same indicators there, but for. Australia there. Uh, what are those footnotes? So the little red yet yeah, they are footnotes, so it's some explanatory information about consumer prices right. okay. uh, from there. And from these reports you can, uh, ex you can have a print, which does a print uh, view of it, and export to Word, Excel, or PDF. And I'll do the export to Excel. Um, so I'll just select the report we were in. So you see that it retains the formatting and even retains the, the footnotes in there. So it's quite a big feature. Um, you may have also seen down the bottom here are tabs. These are just like Excel tabs, so you can change to different uh, views of the data from the report. So we have here more of a cross-country view of the consumer prices. Uh, and you see we've chosen to put some graphic presentation on here, and there's a list of all of the countries that report this data, which is uh, most of the countries in the world report the high level indicators to the international financial statistics. So that's a very brief introduction to the data reports and the types of uh, views you'll be able to expect uh, in those data reports. The query builder. Uh, functionality, which is so if you're looking at really narrowing down into the, exactly the data you want and want full control over uh, retrieving it, uh, this is the main query builder here, which will basically retrieve any time series type data with a country and a concept. Uh, as it's an internal, we have some commercial data sets that only staff will access, but the external version will also have a country partner, country data set. So for trade data for the CPIS and CDIS that I introduced earlier, where there's a country and a partner country, uh, you'll be able to use that uh, query builder to get into that specific data. But I'll just demonstrate the, the main, main time series um, query builder. And you can select these in any order. I'll just go down the list, uh, choosing country, concept, and data source. So you can just uh, go down the list of countries, expand it out. And we, will, we can compare Australia to the United Kingdom again. See as I'm clicking on them, it adds them into the left-hand uh, panel. Uh, and you see there are six, over 6,000 concepts in this data set. Um, when I go into the concept uh, to choose which concepts I'd like, you'll see that it goes down to 1,400. What it's doing is it's saying, I'm only going to retrieve data for you that the, as we have for the United Kingdom and Australia. So, we're guaranteed to get some data at the end of this query, which isn't always the case with a lot of these uh, systems. So I can navigate through a hierarchy which will show the 1400 uh, items, uh, but that's a bit overwhelming for me, so I can just start uh, typing the you know, concept that I'm looking for, and it will filter through the list and just present the, the items that match that. So I'll choose a couple of GDP measures, and also, consumer prices. Uh, one of the aims of this is to not require users to know the, um, the IMF codes because they're a bit arcane and can um, provide difficulty for users. So we're just using the same uh, labels that we use inside the IMF for economists to access the data and uh, we think they're a lot more meaningful in most instances. Um, I'll just choose IFS. There's, we'll also have, we're aiming to have uh, World Economic Outlook data probably for mid next year, also in this tool, uh, which will allow for um, data access to information that's currently available on the IMF.org website, but will allow people to compare IFS, we own other data sources that the funding provides. Um, 
and you can choose a time series as well, time period, um, and you can add quarterly or monthly. I'll just uh, select a longer time period. Click on the view data button. And so what it's doing is retrieving in real time from the IMF data warehouse uh, the information and presenting it in a time series view. Australia, then if we scroll down, there'll be some United Kingdom data as well. And from this, this point, you can export to Word, Excel, or PDF, or CSV. Uh, you also have the ability to view the data as uh, a chart on screen, so you can get a sense of, straight away of, of the trends in the data. So I just selected one time series and went into table chart mode. Uh, which provides a chart on the time. You can select a few rows and it will chart the rows that you select. Uh, you can even highly customise that chart to add a title and change to a dual axis chart, a um, number of different features. saving the actual data, you're just saving the query that provides the data. Uh, you can, there's also an advanced mode which gives you full control of the uh, layout and, um, and some formatting for the table. So for, exa for example, if I wanted to have concept first in the country, which will sort the table in a different way, I can just move the order of the rows so that we'll have concept and then country and it will regenerate the presentation based on that. And you see there's a whole lot of more options, buttons up here. I won't go through them, but there's extra formatting options and ability to pivot the table and, and so on. Again here you see there's the little red triangles which uh, show that there are explanatory notes there. And they come up in nice little boxes which can be uh, compared side by side so you can compare the UK to the Australian information. And you can, from here, you can print or you can copy and paste uh, that information out if you wish. Uh, so if we go back to the home page, um, you'll see here this My Data section. If I go to the recent, the IFS economic indicators that we went into at the beginning is here that I accessed this morning. So I can click back there, that's the most recent report, and I'll go straight back into the report I had earlier. Uh, and I can even add that into my favourites. That. And it will now appear in the favourites list on the home page if I do that. Yeah. And if I go more, it will go into the area where I can look at my, uh, my queries. And you'll see there the example that I set up earlier. So if I'm coming back in tomorrow or the next day, I can go into my queries, click on the ESDS example, and I'll go back to my report and set up exactly how I want to retrieve it. And it will update with any changes that the IMF has made uh, and go uh, from there. I'm not sure how we're going to have time. Uh, There's more I can show, but I'm not moving on. Okay, so I'll leave it there. Um, there are also additional features about the ability to, uh, the system can email your report, uh, data report on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Um, so if you're traveling or don't have access to a computer, you can set up to send you a PDF via your Blackberry or your iPhone. Um, or your iPad, um, and we'll also be looking at adding personalization features as we go. Some of it will be quite rudimentary to start with, but we think it's better to have that functionality out there, get feedback from users such as yourselves, and improve that uh, functionality over time. If people want to ask me questions about it, or even I can show more detailed um, information uh, or functionality in the lunch break or during the break, so we can have 